This is Katherine Schmer, and in this video we're going to talk about the arc length parameter of a curve. So, in other words, parameterizing a curve with respect to arc length. It is sometimes useful to develop an arc length function or arc length parameter for a curve. This is defined to be the arc length from a given base point A to the variable T. Our function is lowercase s of T equals the integral from A to T of the square root of dx du quantity squared plus dy du quantity squared plus dz du quantity squared and then my integrating factor is du. So notice that we use u as the variable of integration because t is already used as the upper limit of integration. So this, is, this function, um, as defined, is really using the same concept that we used for finding arc length. This is the magnitude of the velocity um, times the du, so it would be the magnitude of velocity evaluated with u as the independent variable. Okay, so in this example, we want to find the arc length parameter along the curve starting at t equals zero and then we want to find the length of the indicated portion of the curve. So our curve is r of t equals 2ti plus 1 minus 3tj plus 5 plus 4tk and t is from 0 to 8. So the first thing we're asked to do is find the arc length parameter starting at t equals 0. So I'm going to plug a u into my r vector because in my definition for arc length parameter, I need to take the integral of the magnitude of v of u. So r of u equals 2ui plus 1 minus 3uj plus 5 plus 4uk. And now I can take the derivative. So v of u equals 2i minus 3j plus 4k. So I just take the derivative of position vector r and I get constants um, as the coefficients for i, j, and k. So now I need the magnitude of velocity. So the magnitude of v of u is the square root of 2 squared plus negative 3 squared plus 4 squared, so the square root of 4 plus 9 plus 16, which is the square root of 29. So then my s of t, my arc length parameter, is equal to the integral starting at t equals 0, so from 0 to t, of square root of 29 du. So since I just have a constant, that's square root of 29u, so the antiderivative of square root of 29, evaluated from u equals 0 to u equals t, and that just gives us square root of 29t. So this is actually my arc length parameter, s of t equals square root of 29t. Now we want to find the length of the indicated portion of the curve. So from t equals 0 to t equals 8. So the length of the curve from t equals 0 to t equals 8 is s of 8. So that's square root of 29 times 8, since my formula is square root of 29t. So that's 8 square root of 29. So that's the length of the curve if I started at t equals 0 and walked along the curve until time um, equals 8, then I would have traveled 8 square root of 29 units. 
Now, why do we really care about an arc length parameter? Well, we can parameterize a curve with respect to arc length. And the way we would do that is we would take our curve, in this case, r of t equals 2ti plus 1 minus 3tj plus 5 plus 4tk. And we would take our arc length parameter, s equals square root of 29t, and we would solve that for t. So if I solve that for t, I get t equals s divided by the square root of 29. Now I could actually plug that back in to my position vector and get r of s. So r of s is equal to 2 over the square root of 29 times s, and that's my i component. So everywhere I have a t, I'm plugging in s over the square root of 29. My j component is 1 minus 3 over the square root of 29 times s. And my k component is 5 plus 4 over the square root of 29 times s. So now my curve is reparameterized with respect to arc length instead of with respect to time. And this can be really useful. So reasons to parameterize with respect to arc length. It gives us a purely geometric definition of the curve rather than being time dependent. So the way it's parameterized with a t, it says at a certain time, where am I on my curve? When we parameterize with respect to arc length, we're saying we can determine where we are on the curve after we've traveled a certain distance of s along the curve. And that can be very useful, just looking at the geometry of the curve instead of being dependent on the velocity or time. And then the other reason is each curve has a unique arc length parameterization. So different curves can have different parameterizations with respect to time and still be the same curve, maybe just traveled at a different pace. But if we parameterize with respect to arc length, that's a unique parameterization of the curve. So that's our arc length parameter and why we want to use it.